What is going on guys, my name is Cameron and welcome to the review for the Amazing Spider-Man issue 12. That is what we're going to be diving into today. Now the previous issue saw the end of the Scorpio slash Zodiac saga and this issue is actually the beginning of the Regent saga. Now if you don't know who Regent is, he was the main villain in the Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vow saga for Secret Wars, which I reviewed so you can check out that on the top right corner of the screen now. But I don't want to give too many details away yet, so we should focus on getting into the review now and you'll just learn about his character as we go along. So let's get into the comic. Alright, so jumping into the issue straight off the bat, I am having the biggest deja vu moment of my entire life. Obviously, this issue released about two weeks ago and I picked it up when it released, I read it when it released, and it's really strange because Peter is only just discovering that Mary Jane works for Tony Stark. And I probably have to say that this is a major moment between the two characters of Peter Parker and Mary Jane because Mary Jane hasn't even seen Peter Parker or spoken to Peter Parker since she moved out of the city way back at the end of Superior Spider-Man like two years ago. So this is the first time in a while where Peter and Mary Jane have actually interacted with each other and I'm somewhat hoping that maybe some of their old feelings will like come back into fruition again. You know like Peter getting feelings for Mary Jane, Mary Jane getting feelings for Peter Parker and stuff like that. But what you've got to remember is that Mary Jane moved out of the city because she was tired of all of Peter's like dramatic life with the secret identity and all that crazy stuff and so I don't think they are going to jump back into a relationship together that easily like we'll probably like see them interacting a little bit more but I don't think any relationship will come out of it anytime soon. I honestly do have to say though that I was very very intrigued with how nervous and kind of how much Peter Parker was messing up knowing that Mary Jane was there in the crowd. Like, some of that Parker bad luck started to come back to him. We started to see the original Peter Parker. Instead of this billionaire Peter Parker, Peter obviously began to become nervous again. He started getting some of these, like, I don't know. It was just really nice to see Peter not be so robotic all of a sudden, if you get what I mean. And now it was especially interesting to see the villain Ghost come back into the series. Now, if you don't remember, I think it was about a year ago before the Secret Wars event, Ghost was actually responsible for taking down the Parker Industries building back when Parker Industries first went up. This was when Sajani Weaver teamed up with the Ghost to sabotage Parker Industries from the inside and also working with the Black Cat. So it was a very delicate time for Parker Industries back then and to say that the Ghost is back again, he's already done some serious damage to Parker Industries once, so could he do it again? I especially love the rivalry between Spider-Man and Iron Man in this issue. Of course, Spider-Man is for Parker Industries, Iron Man is for Stark Industries, so that puts Spider-Man and Iron Man as competitors as well. And I think the best thing about it is that these two characters are superheroes, and they are both arguing over who gets to defeat the villain stood in front of them, and I thought that was hilarious, especially from Ghost's point of view. I also thoroughly enjoyed MJ's character in this issue as she stayed behind to help the people that were stuck there, you know, helping citizens get out of the fight. And once again, that's a nod towards MJ's character to know that she can handle herself in situations like this, so that's pretty awesome. I should also probably mention that Spider-Man is kind of in a little bit of a argumentative state with Iron Man slash Tony Stark right now, and it's not only because they are both competitors in terms of companies, but it's also because Tony Stark's assistant is Mary Jane. And that kind of hits Peter on a personal level and somewhat feels personally offended for that. Even though Mary Jane is there by choice and it's not like Tony Stark and Mary Jane are in a relationship or anything like that, but still it slightly makes Peter jealous. Now getting further into the issue, you can see that none of Spider-Man or Iron Man's attacks are working. And the main thing about this is that Ghost actually prepared to fight both of these guys, but I don't think he prepared to fight them both at the same time. And that's where he slips up. Now it's funny because when I was reading this, technically Iron Man and Spider-Man teaming up is almost like the companies teaming up in a partnership. And I thought it was awesome how Spider-Man actually addressed that by saying that it's similar to a merger between Parker Industries and Stark Industries. And it somewhat insinuates that by reading these Spider-Man comics, you begin to think just like Spider-Man. And that's a really interesting concept. I don't know if you guys thought this as well, but I could definitely see Iron Man actually getting the limelight in the press for this. So you see how the press is kind of congratulating Iron Man and just kind of leaving Spider-Man out of it? I could totally see that coming throughout the issue. It was almost like it was foreshadowed from the very beginning, considering that Peter Parker was nervous at the beginning, and then he made a joke on stage and the crowd didn't really react how he wanted to. So it was almost like that followed Peter around from the transition from Peter Parker to Spider-Man throughout the issue. Now going back to what's happening on the screen, Pepper Potts strangely looks like Mary Jane Watson, so that kind of confused me a little bit, so that's probably like one of the little nitpicks that I'd probably say was a negative about the comic. But now finally coming up to the final few pages of this issue, 
we join Augustus Roman, aka the CEO of Empire Unlimited. And as you can see on screen, he's working towards reforming and locking up supervillains, which is actually something that Parker Industries was going to do like last year. And now what I absolutely love about this is that even though he's locking up these prisoners and doing all this crazy stuff, behind closed doors, he's actually putting all of these supervillains into these lockdown capsules and actually taking their powers. And the huge, huge reveal towards the end is that Augustus Roman is in fact a regent the villain from the amazing spider-man renew your vows and we also got a little bit of a backstory there to kind of show his drive of where his motivations are coming from and something that i thought was amazing was how much red was in those panels towards the end of the issue the red sort of insinuated that yeah sure augustus roman seems like a good guy but behind all of the closed doors he's actually a really evil dude and so i thought it was a good use of the colors there in the comic and now guys that is the end of the issue and honestly, I cannot wait to review the next issues because issues 13 and 14 really kick off. And we also have the inclusion of Miles Morales and Miss Marvel, along with some of the other Avengers as well coming up. So can't wait for you guys to see that. But until then, guys, I'm going to give this issue a 9 out of 10. The reveal that Augustus Roman is region, the biggest supervillain from the Amazing Spider-Man Renew Your Vows. And what makes it even more important, in the beginning of that Renew Your Vows saga, Regent straight up kills all of the Avengers. So he is super powerful and it can only get crazier. And now guys, that is the end of this review. Let me know what you thought in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook to stay up to date on my videos and of course hear about comic news, etc. along with giveaways. And you can support this YouTube channel by clicking the support RVM button on the banner of this YouTube channel. And of course, if you like this video, if you like this YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button. And I'll see you all in my next video.